In 2013, a man was walking his dog along a dirt track next to a farm drainage ditch near Peterborough in the UK when he came across what he thought was a black bin bag. But getting closer, he realised it was the body of a man in a dress. This cross-dressed man was provocatively posed with his face in the mud, but with the dress pulled up over his waist displaying his bare buttocks. Was this simply a bizarre accident or had he been murdered and left this way to leave some sort of gruesome message? Let's find out. Joanna Dennehy was born in 1982 in St Albans in the UK. She had a great start to life with a normal childhood in a stable home with her dad, Kevin, and her mum, Kathleen. She did very well at school, even having big plans to become a lawyer. But things took a turn for the worse when Dennehy entered her teenage years. At 15, she ran away from home several times and started drinking and taking drugs. Age 16, she left home completely and started living with 21-year-old John Trainer, still heavily into drink and drugs. And at 17, she gave birth to the first of two children, both of whom would eventually be taken off her by her estranged partner, Trainer. Around 2012, after serving a few short prison sentences for petty crimes, she moved to shared housing in Peterborough. And that's when things got really bad. Fellow housemate Lukasz Slabozetski was a 31-year-old Polish economic migrant who moved to the UK in 2005. He intended to start a new career, to build a new life, and to find a partner to share that journey with him. Unfortunately for Lukasz though, his journey ended with Dennehy. After only a few days of meeting her, texting a friend, he said that life was beautiful and that he had a new girlfriend little did he know what this evil woman had planned for him. Infatuated by Dennehy, on the 19th of March 2013, he received a suggestive text from her, offering him sex. Excited by the prospect of furthering their relationship, Lucas bathed, put on his best clothes, and knocked on Dennehy's bedroom door in the house that they shared together. Walking in, he found her in bed, dressed just in lingerie. Excited, he started to undress, but as he removed his shirt, Dennehy unexpectedly pulled a knife from under her pillow and forced it deep into his chest, killing him almost instantly. Pulling out the knife, and with the deathly whine coming from Lucas, blood started pouring out all over the bed and partly over the semi-naked Dennehy. Relishing in the climactic moment, she watched as his lifeless body slumped forward onto the bed. Lucas was dead. And after the excitement passed, the realism of what to do with the body set in. In order to give her time to decide on how to dispose of it permanently, she put the body in a wheelie bin outside the house, leaving it there for two days. And as if that wasn't bad enough, Dennehy even made the point of showing the corpse to a 14-year-old child she had befriended. How sick is that? To aid her, Dennehy called on the help of Gary Richards, who was also known as Stretch, a giant of a man standing over seven feet tall. This larger than life, small time criminal was besotted by her seductive nature, one of many allies she controlled with the use of sex. Stretch bundled Lucas's decomposing body into the trunk of his car, and he and Dennehy drove to the outskirts of Peterborough, dumping the corpse in a farmland ditch. John Chapman was a brave man. The 56-year-old fought for his country during the Falklands War in the Royal Navy, but had fallen on hard times, and after the sad death of his wife, he turned to drink. After a few days after the evil slaughter of Lukas Slabozetsky, Dennehy moved into the bedsit in the same house as Chapman. They did not get on, with him referring to her as the mad woman, so Dennehy wanted him out. She first made up a story that Chapman had walked into the bathroom while she was bathing and wouldn't leave. But after that failed to get him removed, she hatched a plan which involved getting him drunk. 
In the early hours of the 29th of March, an intoxicated Chapman lay slumped on the sofa bed in his tiny bedsit. He was so drunk after being plied with alcohol all night by Dennehy that he was barely conscious. With the war veteran now completely incapacitated, the psychopathic Dennehy returned from her room with her killing knife. Chapman, in a drunken stupor, unaware of the horror that was about to begin, simply laid there and awaited his fate. Grabbing his hair and pulling his head sharply back, Dennehy sliced deep into Chapman's neck, severing an artery. As the blood came gushing out, Chapman, in his confused and paralysed state, probably attempted to defend himself. But after a second, and then a third, fourth and fifth stab to the chest, the bloody dagger ripped into his heart, and any fight he had left was gone. After the frenzied attack was over, Dennehy lifted the knife and simply gazed as the blood of John Chapman dripped off the tip. She then cleaned it on the bedsheets, walked out of the room and locked the door behind her. Over many months prior to the murder of her first two victims, Dennehy had built a very close relationship with her landlord, Kevin Lee. The 48-year-old was a much-loved husband and father, but due to bad judgment on his part, he allowed himself to get caught up in Dennehy's life. Because of her aggressive nature, Lee even offered Dennehy a job collecting rent for the many properties he owned in the area. And just like the other men she controlled, he became infatuated with her, and they started a torrid affair, often indulging in extreme sex games. So secure in their relationship, Dennehy even took Lee to the wheelie bin and showed him the twisted dead corpse of Lukas Slabozetsky before the remains were disposed of. And you would have thought that after seeing firsthand what this evil woman was capable of, Lee would have run a mile. But no, he didn't. Hours after the murder of her second victim, John Chapman, Dennehy invited Lee back to her room where she had killed Lucas to play a sadomasochistic sex game, something they had done before. It was suggested that she wanted Lee to wear a dress and she would rape him. Lee, excited by this prospect, hurried over to the property where he found Dennehy and one of her black sequin dresses laid out on the bed. Stripping naked and struggling to get into the tight-fitting dress, Lee began to role-play their extreme sexual fantasy. Being pinned to the bed with Dennehy straddling Lee, she held his hands above his head to stop him struggling. Lee's fantasy was being played out, but unbeknown to him, Dennehy had reached under the pillow and pulled out the knife that she had already used on her first two victims. Unable to move due to the submissive position, Lee watched as the knife was raised above her head before in one swift movement it was buried deep into his chest. Still with his life flowing, Lee fought back, but it was no use. Dennehy was strong and unleashed another four stabs into his body, penetrating both his lungs and his heart. And as life drained from the bloodied body of Lee, Dennehy climbed off her third victim and sat watching as he fell silent. With two more victims laying lifeless in two different houses, Dennehy once again called her friend Gary Stretch to act as an undertaker to help with the bodies. With her apparently singing the Britney Spears song, Oops, I've done it again down the phone. Stretch, now with additional help from Leslie Layton, another slave of Dennehy's, bundled the lifeless corpse of Kevin Lee, still dressed in Dennehy's black sequin dress, into the back of Lee's own car and drove it to another ditch just outside of Peterborough. But in a cruel and a humiliating twist, Lee's body was positioned face down in the ditch with the dress pulled up over his waist showing his bare buttocks for all to see. This final degrading act was probably left as a message. Returning to the house where John Chapman's body lay, the trio dumped his corpse into the back of the car, drove to the same ditch used as Lukas Slabozetsky and disposed of his body. After cruelly attempting to clean up the crime scenes using bleach, Dennehy and Stretch fled Peterborough and headed west. 
After being reported missing by his wife, Kevin Lee's body was found by a local dog walker. And due to his mobile phone records, Dennehy was now on the police's wanted list. So the chase was on. For the next few days, the pair enjoyed their freedom. Referring to themselves as modern day Bonnie and Clyde, they took photos, acted like they didn't have a care in the world, even with the memories of the murders that were still fresh in their minds. But then, on the 2nd of April, arriving in Hereford and driving slowly through the town, Dennehy shouted, I want my fun, you need to find me someone. Stretch pointed at a random man walking his dog and said, will he do? Calmly getting out of the car, Dennehy walked up behind 63-year-old retired fireman Robin Bereza. And before he even noticed her there, Dene stabbed him in the back and then in the arm. Turning around, Bereza shouted, What on earth are you doing? To which Dene replied, I want to hurt you. I'm going to f kill you. The two continued to fight into the road before Dene abruptly returned to her car, only because a member of the public drove into the street. Severely injured, Bereza lived, but only due to the swift action of the medical services that day. After driving slowly away, Dennehy turned to Stretch without saying a word and kissed him on the cheek. But she still wasn't satisfied. She still needed to kill someone. And just 10 minutes later, they came across 56-year-old John Rogers, again, a man walking his dog. In a similar action, Dennehy left the car, walked up behind her victim, but this time started stabbing him repeatedly. In fact, more than 30 times leaving the poor man for dead and even taking his dog, Dennehy once again returned to the car and they calmly drove away. Thankfully though, John Rogers survived his encounter with Dennehy, but only just. In no attempt to flee, local police were able to promptly surround the area and they found Dennehy still in the car. Without fuss, she calmly surrendered and was taken into custody. Under police interrogation, she showed no remorse or concern over the gruesome killings. She even joked and flirted with the police officers. Court psychiatrist diagnosed Dennehy as suffering from a severe, emotionally unstable personality disorder, an antisocial personality disorder, paraphilia sadomasochism, and a psychopathic disorder. But I can't help thinking that's probably not even half of it. In February 2014, Dennehy got a whole life sentence, one of only two currently running in the UK for women, the other being Rose West. Her partner in crime, Gary Stretch, got a minimum term of 19 years. And in one final bizarre twist, in 2019, Dennehy was moved to the same prison as the infamous serial killer Rose West. But after Dennehy threatened to kill her, they had to move Rose for her own safety. Personally, I'd have locked them in a cell together and thrown away the key. Hi, thanks for watching our twisted tale, Joanna Dennehy, the Fenland Femme Fatale. If you enjoyed it, then please stab that like button and consider sharing. If you really like what we do, then please subscribe. It will really help us out. And just a quick shout out to one of our loyal subscribers, Alfred Glitchcock, who suggested Joanna Dennehy as a twisted tale. Thanks, Alfred. If you know of an interest in twisted crime, then please let us know by commenting below. Good night and keep safe.